Hello everyone, it's scientist Renee. I'm excited to see you again. Today we are going to be lesson working on lesson 2.3 in Waves Energy and Information. We're going to be investigating particles. We're going to do this lesson a little bit differently than it's written on the Amplify website, so if that's what you're looking at, just know that we're going to look a little bit different. We're going to do things in a different order. So we're going to keep investigating the question, how does sound energy travel through material? We know it can travel through, and so now we're wondering, well, how does that actually happen? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to finish reading the book that we started, Sound on the Move, to learn more about how sound energy travels through materials. It's going to help us better understand what we observed in the sim in our last lesson. And we're also going to go into the simulation after this reading, and we're going to do a little bit more. So hopefully this book is going to help us understand what's happening. So I'm going to read you the rest of the book. We read up to, I think, page 13. We read about mountain bluebirds, and we learned about their syrinx that vibrates. So now we're going to learn about some different animals. We're going to start on page 14. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. How do sperm whales communicate? Sperm whales live in the ocean all over the world. These whales make clicking sounds to send messages to one another. The sounds they make must travel in the water to reach other sperm whales. Water is the material that sperm whales sperm whale clicks travel through. Like air and all other materials, water is made of tiny particles. This diagram helps us visualize what the particles of water would look like if we could zoom in to see them. What do you notice about the water particles compared to the particles of air? You might see that the particles of water are packed in much closer together. However, they can still move around and slide past one another. This makes me think of the diagram that we saw on pages eight and nine, where we saw ground packed together, water a little bit further apart, and gas very far apart. To make a clicking sound, a sperm whale must first breathe air into its lungs. As it swims underwater, the whale moves the air through tubes and air sacs inside its head. The moving air causes vibrations in flaps of skin and muscle. These flaps are similar to human vocal cords. The vibrating flaps are the source of the sound waves. The sound waves travel outward through the head by way of particle collisions. That's an interesting term. The vibration of the whale's head disturb the nearest particles of water. Then these water particles collide with the particles next to them those particles collide with the next water particles and so on. That word collides coming up a lot. We're going to investigate that in the sim. We call this pattern of motion a sound wave. The sound waves of a sperm whale's clicks can travel long distances in the ocean to reach listeners. In this case, the listeners are faraway whales. So it looks like we've got a diagram. We can see those tubes inside the whale's head those vibrating flaps, the things that move. We've got an air sac, an oil-filled sac, and then we've got lungs. I bet those are very big lungs. And this uh, caption says, this diagram shows water particles colliding. The pattern of collisions is the sound wave from a sperm whale's click. The sound wave moves through the water. So I see the whale here. I see an ear here. So it looks to me like all these particles are kind of in little groups. That's interesting. Ooh, we've got a different animal. How do kangaroo rats communicate? Kangaroo rats are small desert animals that live in underground burrows. These animals can send signals through the ground. The ground is the material that the kangaroo rat signals travel through. The ground, just like air and water, is made up of tiny particles. We can't see these particles either. Still, we can visualize them as looking something like this. I recognize that that's the same diagram that we saw on that pages nine and 10, the one that showed us the mountain scene. What do you notice about the particles that make up the ground? You might see that the particles of the ground are packed in even more tightly than the particles of water. Yeah, they're definitely 
pretty squished together. These particles can vibrate, but they can't move around freely. They have no place to go. So that's a little bit different than the water where it seems like, you know, the, the particles can move a little bit more. So I wonder if that's going to make a difference if there's a, if there's sound traveling through the ground. Kangaroo rats communicate by foot drumming. A kangaroo rat taps its foot on the ground to make the ground vibrate. The vibrating particles of the ground collide with the particles next to them. Then, <coughs> excuse me, then those particles collide with the particles next to them and so on. This pattern of motion is a sound wave. The sound wave travels away from the kangaroo rat for long distances by way of particle collisions. A kangaroo rat drums its foot to let other rats know that it owns the underground burrow where it is drumming. When a kangaroo rat drums, the sound wave travels through the ground. Eventually, the sounds reach other kangaroo rats in the area. These listeners can sense the sound waves in the ground and understand the message, this burrow is mine. I guess that would kind of be like going into your house and just hitting the wall to show people that you own the house. We've got a diagram here too, just like we had with the sperm whale diagram. So it says this diagram shows particles that make up the ground. I do notice that they are closer together than the particles in this drawing. Hmm. The particles are colliding as the sound wave from foot drumming travels through them. So again, I'm kind of seeing these moving or I see them grouped up. I wonder what that has to do with anything. Messages are all around us. All the time, animals are sending important messages in the air, the ocean, and even the ground. Animals get important information by listening to the sounds other animals make. They may find out when family members or predators are nearby. They may learn where to find their next meal. Different animals live in the air, in the water, or in the ground. However, all of these animals rely on communication in order to survive. And that looks like the end of our book. We do have our glossary. One thing I want to look at is collision because we've heard that word a lot. So it looks like a collision is two or more things bumping into each other. And we heard about particles colliding. So I guess those little pieces that make up everything bump into each other. noticed a couple things. What did we notice about the diagram of the sperm whale's click? I, we noticed that, you know, these particles are kind of, it almost looks like a pattern to me. They're not just randomly scattered everywhere. And as I visualize the particles moving, what pattern of motion do you picture in your mind? So that's an interesting one. I would like to picture that using the simulation. So that's what we're gonna do in our next activity. But before we do, I want you to just picture in your mind, imagine you could see the air made of all these tiny little particles. Like maybe you, it's almost like you threw up some flour or dirt into the air and you can see all these sparkling little particles. Now, as you hear my voice coming through your computer speakers, picture, visualize what's happening to those particles of air. Are they moving? Are they still? Is my voice using them at all? I want you just to take a minute and picture that in your brain. So one last vocabulary word that we're going to add before we move on to our simulation in our next video is that word collision, which we heard is two or more things bumping into each other. So if your fists do a collision, one fist bumps, so this would be a collision. We're going to stop the video here. And in our next video, we're going to go into the sim. I'll see you soon.